Svadhyaya Devanagari, Svadhyaya is a Sanskrit term which literally means one's own reading and self-study. It is also a broader concept with several meanings. In various schools of Hinduism, Svadhyaya is a niyama virtuous observance connoting introspection and study of self. The term also means the self-study and recitation of the Vedas and other sacred books. Etymology, meaning and usage Svadhyaya is a compound Sanskrit word composed of sva sva plus adhyaya. Adhyaya means a lesson, lecture, chapter, reading. Sva means own, one's own, self, the human soul. Therefore, svadhyaya literally means one's own reading, lesson. Svadhyaya is also a compound Sanskrit word composed of sva, sva plus jaya. Jaya means meditating on. The root of adhyaya and jaya is jai, jai, which means meditate, contemplate, think of. The term svadhyaya therefore also connotes contemplation, meditation, reflection of oneself, or simply to study one's own self. The term svadhyaya has other meanings. In the SMRITIS, it refers to the historical practice of self-reciting Vedas to ensure it is memorized and faithfully transmitted, without writing, by the word of mouth, to the next generation. In various schools of Hinduism, particularly yoga, svadhyaya is also a niyama, a virtuous behavior. As a virtue, it means, study of self, self-reflection introspection, observation of self. Svadhyaya is translated in a number of ways. Some translate it as the study of the scriptures and dasanas. Some translators simply use the word study without qualifying the type of study. McNeil translates it as self-study or spiritual self-education. Jaya, when used in the context of self-study in ancient and medieval Indian texts, is synonymous with yasa, adi and vix, while adhyaya, when used in context of reciting and reading in Indian texts, is synonymous with anukti, nipatha and patha. <laughs> Svadhyaya in ancient literature Upanishads Taittiriya Upanishads hymn 1.9.1 emphasizes the central importance of svadhyaya in one's pursuit of reality RTA, truth satya, self-restraint perseverance tapas, tranquility and inner peace samas, relationships with others, family, guests praja, prajana, manush, atithi and all rituals agnaya, agnahotram, Taittiriya Upanishad, however, adds in verse 1.9 9.1, that along with the virtue of Svadhyaya process of learning, one must teach and share what one learns. This is expressed by the phrase, Svadhyaya Pravakane ca, translated as, and learning and teaching. By Gampiranandan verse 1.11.1, the final chapter in the education of a student, the Taittiriya Upanishad reminds, Satyamvada Dharmankara Svadhyanmapramada speak the Satya, follow the Dharma, from Svadhyaya never cease. One of the earliest mention of Svadhyaya is found in Taittiriya Aranyaka 2.15. Svadhyayo Adyatavya. Svadhyaya must be practiced. Satpath Brahmana also repeats it. Chandogya Upanishad verse 4.16.1-2 recommends both silent manas and vocal types of svadhyaya. Other scriptures 
Patanjali's Yoga Sutra, in verse 2.44, recommends Svadhyaya as follows. Svadhyaya Sampriyoga Study thyself, discover the divine. Vishnu Smriti's verse 22.92, states that, "...human body is cleansed by water, the mind is cleansed by truth, the soul by self-study and meditation, while understanding is cleansed by knowledge." Vasistha Dharmasastra verses 27.1 through 27.7 states that Svadhyaya helps an individual understand and overcome his past. Apastamba Dharmasutra 1.4.12.1 states Svadhyaya is a form of tapas. This view is shared by Baudhyana Dharmasastra in verses 4.1.29 to 4.1.30, which adds that Svadhyaya is a means of getting past one's past mistakes and any guilt. Baudhyana Dharmasastra describes Svadhyaya, in verse 2.6.11, as the path to Brahman, highest reality, universal spirit, eternal self. Svadhyaya is mentioned as one of the virtues in Bhagavad Gita 16.1. Svadhyaya is mentioned a second time in Bhagavad Gita verse 17.15 as a component of the discipline of one speech by which, states the verse, "...speak words that are truthful, kind, helpful, and elevates those who hear it." <laughs> Svadhyaya as a historical practice Learning one's Vedic recension as a tool for memorization, Svadhyaya had a unique meaning for Vedic scholars as the principal tool for the oral preservation of the Vedas in their original form for millennia. When used as a formal part of scriptural study, Svadhyaya involves repeated recitations of scripture for purposes of mastering the mantras with their accurate pronunciation. The Vedas had not been committed to writing in ancient times. Almost all printed editions depend on the late manuscripts that are hardly older than 500 years, not on the still extant and superior oral tradition. Manir Manir Williams defines Srati as, "...sacred knowledge orally transmitted by the Brahmins from generation to generations, the Veda." Michael Witzel explains this oral tradition as follows. The Vedic texts were orally composed and transmitted, without the use of script, in an unbroken line of transmission from teacher to student that was formalized early on. This ensured an impeccable textual transmission superior to the classical texts of other cultures. It is, in fact, something like a tape recording. Not just the actual words, but even the long-lost musical tonal accent as in Old Greek or in Japanese has been preserved up to the present. The commentator Sayana discusses this term in the introduction of his commentary on the Agveda, in which he says that Svadhyaya enables Vedic rituals Yajnika to take place. Madhva, the dualistic Vaishnava philosopher, defined philosophy as the three stage process of understanding, sravana, reflection, manjana, and application, nididhyasana, expressing itself in two forms study svadhyaya, and teaching. Pravakana. Of these two, Madhva considered teaching to be the highest aspect of discipline leading to moksha. Madhavacharya's views on Svadhyaya are to be found in Chapter 15 of Sarva Dasana Sangraha cf. References. The Taittiriya Upanishad, which belongs to the Yajur Veda, is still popular among those who learn Vedic chanting. Recitation of mantras japa is an integral part of bhakti yoga, and in this tradition of Hinduism, it is sometimes called japa yoga. Exceptions There are certain days on which Svadhyaya were prohibited, these were called Anadhyaya, after which Svadhyaya must be resumed on the following day, therefore the day of resumption is also called Svadhyaya. <laughs> Svadhyaya as a Niyama 
Svadhyaya is one of the three key elements in the practice of yoga as defined in the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, appearing in the opening verse of Book 2 on spiritual practice and elaborated upon in two other verses. Patanjali mentions Svadhyaya a second time as one of the five recommended observances niyamas, along with purity, contentment, austerity, and self-surrender. The five niyamas, together with the five abstentions yamas, have been described as the Ten Commandments of the Samkhya Yoga. The practice of Svadhyaya as a niyama is perfected in many forms. One form of Svadhyaya is mantra meditation, where certain sound constructs pregnant with meaning are recited, anchoring the mind to one thought. This practice helps draw the mind away from outward going tendencies, silencing the crowding of thoughts, and ultimately towards inward feeling of resonance. It can alternately be any music, sermon, chant, inspirational book that absorbs the person to a state of absorption, trance, unifying oneness. Svadhyaya is practiced as a self reflection process, where one silently meditates, in asana, on one's own behaviors, motivations, and plans. Svadhyaya is, in a sense, for one's spirit and mind a process equivalent to watching one's body in a non distorting mirror. This self-study, in yoga, is not merely contemplation of one's own motives and behaviors, but also of one's circumstances and the environment one is in, assessing where one is in one's life, what is one's life direction, if and how desirable changes may lead to a more fulfilling self. <laughs> Notes <laughs>